the um, irrational. It's like, just just go do this all in. Um, so that's something which we can talk about later as well. But for now, let's do it. All right, so we've got, um, what's the date today? Today is the 15th of Feb. Jeez, coaching. Or aggressive. Um, now, do you want these to be completely all in or would you rather maybe a, a mix of kind of completely all in builds and maybe oh, some look, ones where it's just aggressive? Truly, I don't mind. Like I say, like I spend, you know, two hours playing all these macro games and I, you know, I win, say, 75%. Mm -hmm. But then I drop my last five, six, seven games in a row every session. Um, so I don't, I don't mind. No worries, man. All right. Well, um, let's just go through what a, a whole bunch of different builds. Um, okay. So we're going to start out. Um, by the way, if there's anyone who's willing to play against us, please hop in. But um, we're going to start out with a... Uh, you just playing against an AI. Just make yep, them like cool. a medium AI or whatever. It doesn't. It doesn't matter because AI always just does the most ridiculous stuff. Um, so we're going to start out with the 12 pool double gas Ravager all-in. Um, one of the hardest all-ins for most players to stop. Um, you don't have any issues using Ravagers, right? Like you're not just like no. the, the guy who just can't shoot bile or something. Um, well, <laughs> no, I can, I can use Ravagers, just not... Um, my flyer help uh, isn't amazing. But I don't think it'll matter in this. Sort oh of right, I remember it doesn't show up very well for you. Okay. Well, I'm colorblind. Ah, uh, yeah. So like I can't see, it. and I've put colorblind mode on, and it makes it worse. <laughs> like uh, whoever designed it, I don't think they're actually colorblind. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, like I can see it, but I, it takes me time to line it up. I think, like I have to really concentrate on it. Yeah, because I think the colorblind mode doesn't really help with that at all right um it really doesn't yeah because it, it's basically just there for the team colors and doesn't doesn't help that so anyway 12 pool um whoops well, I, I already went 14 14 that's all sorry right. i didn't I... let's hop out of the game let's restart i forgot to remind you because we we're talking about that that's fine it takes us two seconds to start up another game um yeah so i'm gonna lock the turn my scene switcher off i'm gonna lock this on the in-game screen so the guys watching at home can see um of course this is a legit build legit cheese um so 12 pool, so we're going to go 12 pool, 14 gas, and then we're going to go, I don't know the second gas timing, so it doesn't matter, honestly, um, we're going to say uh, 15, yeah, and then another 14 gas or something like that, so basically just go 12 pool, don't build anything at the start, Overlord goes across the map, um, and you want that to move somewhere where later on it's going to be able to spot that ramp. Um, because it's going to provide you high ground vision to get on up there and um, blast down that wall and any marines standing on the high ground. Same time as you do this. Is this a, a versus Protoss or Terran, Terran build? This is a ZVT, yeah. Um, so keep droning to 14 and then you can, you can drop one gas. And then you want to build one more drone. And don't worry about rushing your second gas, that can wait a little bit. Do I need an overlord though? Oh, you just um, mean. So yeah, you mean take it now though. Yeah, take it now. Take it now. One more drone. Drone. This is yeah. One more drone and then an overlord. Okay. Uh, actually, not even an overlord. Don't do that yet. Roach Warren. When that spawning pool finishes, no queen. Okay, so three guys on gas, then three dudes on the other gas. Yep. Both gases. And build one drone. Oh, sorry. I had minerals for both. That's okay. That's fine. Overlord and one drone is what you need. So what you're going to do after this is you're going to build just roaches. So as soon as that roach horn finishes, you're going to build just roaches and you're going to go across this map. Now your second overlord needs to also rally to the front of their base. Because if your first overlord dies, that second overlord will give you vision. Even though it's it's going to get there pretty late, it'll get there. Yep. So um, your first overlord, you can move it kind of straight to the left. So it's like due south of your opponent's main base ramp um, is where you want that overlord. Now the roach horn's finished, so let's queue up some roaches and you want to build one more overlord um, behind these three roaches so that you can continue roach ravager production. So overlord, as soon as this lava pops out, there we go. Okay, beautiful. Um, yep, your overlord, you told that to go to the perfect location. That's good. Um, these roaches, you want to morph to Ravagers as soon as you can. Now, you've only got supply to do two straight away. Basically, just move them straight across the map and just keep moving them. Morph Ravagers as you go. 
because the Ravagers move faster. So if you morph them closer to your base, it'll cut down your overall travel time. So get morphing those Ravagers, keep making yep. Roaches, and you're just completely all in. You do not build a Queen, you do not build drones, you just keep making Roaches and Ravagers and going across the map. So, um, yeah, that's that's essentially it. It's, it's a pretty simple all-in um, in that terms. There's a lot of micro potential, um, but this, this all-in is, is pretty sick. It's super powerful. Um... Would I attack with the first three Ravagers generally? Yeah, so you, will, you will go straight here. away. You're there so early. Right. And use that Overlord for high ground vision. And don't just YOLO up the ramp like that. You've got to use your range. You can pull the weak one to the back. And you can have fun doing some fancy micro while you continually rally Roaches and Ravagers across this map. So try not to drop your uh, Bile Spots on the same area. You always want to try and spread them out unless it's on a building. So you just go shoot one. Keep fighting, shoot another one, and the, the, they kind of cause your opponent to have to dodge. And whenever your opponent's dodging, you've already got the superior ranged units. It just makes things even better for you. So try not to use uh, rapid fire with it. Try to just go button press, button press, button click, button click, button click with your bile. Because you want to be much more precise. I'm not sure I even use rapid fire now. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah, and you just killed the medium AI. Woo! Hooray! <laughs> That's all right. This is really hard for players to stop. But yeah, it's all about keeping these Ravagers alive. Um, you really get to focus on your micro. Sometimes your opponent will have the right response and they'll just beat you. That's how cheese works. Doesn't That's matter. Fine. You just shake it off yeah. and you just continue into a next game. It's like a four minute loss. Ah, oh, meh. Queue up another game. Focus on your micro. Remember that even when it looks like you're being held, you can sometimes kill them with the second wave. Um, That's what we saw happen. I think it was Scarlet versus Major at um, WESG. So... Um, a lot of players, Laser, Scarlet, um, were doing it at WESG. I think, um, yeah, it's pretty damn powerful. So that's a really cool build. Let's just yeah, move on good. to another one. I reckon yeah. that one, you just kind of play it out, practice it. I don't think there's too many details. I think we covered it. In terms of notes for that style, you basically just want to... Overlords need to go to the ramp to spot... Be safe, though, until the Ravagers arrive. Woo! All right, so that's one ZVT build you can do. Um, what if you get bored of that? What's another build which works in both ZVP and ZVP? That's the Therapy build, the Therapy All-In. Now, in case I miss anything in our little run-through of it here, I do have a video on that, a daily. So there's that linked um, for now. Let's hop into another game. So this is usually used against Protoss, especially on maps where they have a wide area to wall off at their natural, um, because then their wall has some more weak points in it. Um, by the way, if anyone does want to play against us, feel free to hop in. Hey guys, anyone want to get cheesed? Doesn't look like anyone's there in the channel. That's cool. We'll hop in. Okay. So the opening for this is 17 gas, 17 pool, 18 hatch, um, 18, two uh, queen, and two lings. So that's one pair of zerglings. Um, 19 roach horn, Q second queen immediately. Um, plus one drone. Just cast things. So, I'm just trying to remember it all. I think I might even have a write up on TL actually. Therapy all in. That would actually have the build order written exactly, so I don't have to remember it off the top of my head. Um, looks good. So, um, with one of these drones as it pops out, take your gas. So, normally it's one of those drones that pops. That's okay, you took it slightly earlier. Um, one more drone, and then as you get 200 minerals in a second, drop the spawning pool.
All right, so you want to drone to 18 supply, and then you want to send a drone down to build a hatchery right now. Okay, so normally you can grab that drone as it just pops out as well if you want to be super exact. The good thing about these cheesy builds is you really start to focus on all the tiny details. That's one of the best things you can get from improving with these because the build kind of simplifies everything you've got to do. You really get to focus on the details. So don't spend your lava. Just wait for that pool to finish. You're going to notice you okay. line it up with 200 minerals. So you'll have a queen and a pair of zerglings pretty much right as that spawning pool finishes. It finishes. We've got 200 minerals just a second later. Beautiful. Um, we are going to get zergling speed. So you want to build a um, uh, roach warren now. Um, and now you want to build two drones. Oh, actually an overlord, sorry. My bad. That's, right. that's, my, that's my fault. Um, actually, two drones then an overlord. It doesn't really matter. Send this queen down to the natural. Queue up your second overlord. Oh, uh, queen, queen, sorry, what? queen. Blah, my brain. Um, build woo, uh, and you're gonna build roaches when this roach warren finishes. So you'll notice you have enough supply to build seven roaches, I believe, or six. All right. So build an overlord. And it's going to be mass speedlings behind these roaches. And these roaches go straight across the map, directly to your opponent's natural. Um, of course, you can wait to group up them like just a little bit before you actually attack. But you're basically rallying everything across the map. One more overlord as well, just to make sure you you know, you know don't forget once the fighting starts. Yep. And just non-stop zerglings from here. Um, yeah. So... So... Wait, oh no, the roaches are so far away. But yeah, wait for the zerglings to arrive to reinforce, yeah? Uh, yeah, your roaches can pretty much start attacking straight away. Your lings will get there very soon after. Because yeah. sometimes you go in, force out an overcharge, and then you're like, well, my lings aren't even here. Let's just back out, wait for the overcharge to run out, and then fully commit. Um, and you can do this against Terran as well. Yeah, okay. So, I've written down the build order in your document, um, because I was doing it off the top of my head. Uh, I did tell you to do it slightly different to how I normally would. Normally I'd say build six to eight zerglings earlier as well, um, mm -hmm. after you've kind of got the roach horn down and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and the reason for that is that allows you to shut down their map vision. Um, so yeah, that, that can be really nice. Um, like before the roaches, but sort of at the same sort of time. Yeah, just before the roaches. So what I'm going to say, actually... Change up the build ever so slightly to a 22 overlord... Doing the overlord before the roach warren. So basically, we change up the order ever so slightly. It's like, okay, you go the overlord, then you go the roach warren. Um, then you drone back up to 22, you get your second queen. Overlords to 44 supply, rather than 36 we did this game. And then you build seven roaches and mass speedlings behind it. And that's yeah, the cool. slightly more well-rounded version of it. Even though it'll hit slightly later, um, your opponents will really struggle to defend it. I think both of those builds are good for me. Because when I have tried to go all-in or cheese, it hits too close to when Terran is looking to hit their own attack. Sort of like 4.30 to 5 minutes. So they have units ready when I arrive ordinarily. But those two are nice and quick. Yeah, you kind of hit just as their stims kicking in or the medevacs are popping and suddenly things get way harder. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so these are good um, good builds. Let's think what are the cheeky, cheeky good builds. You want a uh, Zerg one, I guess? Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, do we have anyone in chat? Pig channel on... Um, anyone want to play a ZVZ with us? We can do a little bit of micro. Anyone who's around um, Plat 1, Diamond 3? Um, please hop into chat channel pig on NA because I'd like us to actually have something, some, some people to react to so we can focus more on some of the details rather than just give you 
12 different builds in one hour and no detail on any of them and leave you to figure it out on your own. It'd yeah. be cool if we could figure out some details as well. Um, Narkhead says, Pig, is this an all-in? How much damage do you need to do? I, yeah, it's pretty all-in. Like, as always, if you totally Shrek their economy, you can transition out, um, even out of the Roach Ravager build. If you kill every single SCV, so the Terran only has mules mining, and then you're still kind of pressuring and messing up his production, then maybe you can transition. That one is like, you've got so few workers. You've got to pull off gas at home, try to get a queen out, try to get an expansion. Um, this one, obviously, you've got a little bit more of a robust economy. So say you just kill the opponent's natural and kill a lot of workers. Maybe you can transition from that by dropping a third and droning up behind it. But you're doing this off 19 workers. The first one's off about 14 or 15 workers, like some really shitty small count. Um... Vibrid says he's going to hop on. He says, hey, I can. Hopefully he is around plat 1 to diamond 3. NA server, chat channel pig. <clears throat> um, and even if he's willing to like play Terran or whatever, just so you can get someone to react to. So Pete, Pete is on the way. Slowly educating the world on chat channels. One coaching session at a time. Okay. So Pete is here. I assume Pete is Vibrid. Um, we're going to put him up. So Zerg versus Zerg. You can open with a 12 pool. Um, or a 13 pool. Actually, yeah, we could we could learn my slow Zergling all in. It's kind of gambly. I don't know if it works, actually. Tr I've tried that a couple of times, and I just died every time. Yeah, I, I don't know if it works, because... Um, the players won't necessarily understand what the follow-ups are, so they'll just kind of be on autopilot until you hit about Masters or Top Diamond. Because um, at that level, people will say, ah, oh, this is a gasless expand build, there's no Ling speed, I'll skip Baneling Nest, blah, blah, blah. But other players might just be like, ah, oh, he's attacking me with Zerglings, build a Baneling Nest. And then it actually counters your follow-up, which is a surprise. So that's kind of like a bit of a mind game. We can just do 12 pool into something else then. Um, and that works just fine as well. Oh, we've got Vibrid as well. All right, Vibrid can come watch. Hey, Pete. What's your main race? Okay, awesome. Just play your standard expand build. However you like. All right, let's just practice the therapy build since we've got a Protoss player here. Um, I don't know where Vibrid went. I tried to invite him. He says, am I too late? No, you're not too late. I mean, you're too late to play this one match, but you can play the next match. Accept my invite. Accept. Hobbs this one, play the next one. All right. Here we go, guys. Good luck. Have fun. So just do the same build you just did in that last game. Um, the therapy all in there. 17 gas, 17 pool, 18 hatch. I'll walk you through it again since we're changing up the order ever so slightly. And it um, should be good. So standard opening, just remember, 17 gas, 17 pool, 18 hatch. We should be good to go. Oh, 
So build one more drone, and one of these eggs you've already got building, rally it straight to the gas. So take that straight away. One more drone. And put down a spawning pool. Spawning pool straight away. There we go. Good, good, good. So drone up to 18. And you'll notice that your next egg that you start, you can rally that straight to your natural. Um, put guys on gas. Good, 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 good. So one more drone. <clears throat> <laughs> oh my god I forgot about that <laughs> okay so um, let's focus so one more drone so you always drone up to 18 and then it's queen and a pair of zerglings here at 18 supply should time out as this pool finishes beautiful symmetry I love it one pair of zerglings now I want you to um, build an, uh, more drones and an overlord so it's going to be 22 overlord and now you go to put your your zergling speed down. So start that link speed. It's Before. okay to start that a little bit late. That's okay. It's not it's not the biggest deal. And we're gonna put that roach horn down as soon as you have 150 minerals. All right. So build one more drone, and then an overlord as well. And then you're just saving up for your uh, roaches. I guess actually build two more pairs of zerglings so that you can clear up the map. We'll do it that way this time. So two more pairs of Zerglings and after that only Roaches. And remember after your Roaches start, you build an Overlord and then Mass Speedlings. So more Lings now? Roaches. So you've already built a few too many Zerglings here. You've gone up to eight. That's okay. Actually, that's, that's okay. That's the upper limit. And those Zerglings, you should try to put them on a separate hotkey if you can um, and use that to deny scouting. I forgot to tell you to start the second Queen, so that's my bad. It's not the end of the world, but you can start that up now. Um, you need to start two or three more Roaches. Actually, cancel the Queen. Forget it. It's too late. Yep. Cancel her. Get two or three more Roaches going. And otherwise, just non-stop Zerglings. Go kill. I've actually accidentally had it on the Australian server um, throughout. My bad. That's okay. So, yeah. Yep, just pull out of that overcharge. Very nice bait there. Group everything up. Get all these guys together. And as soon as that overcharge is down, I want you to push in there. Keep rallying speedlings. And you just want to focus down pylons because they deal the most damage. Uh, then the fighting units. And then, of course, the probes. So, just go for broke. GG! Not bad. I think that the um, the changed build order threw me a little bit, but um, I do think it's going to be better for me once I remember it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's slightly different, which is weird. So I'd like to us to do that one more time. I'm going to leave group, swap the US um, the server back to Western US. Because um, that should be relatively even. Vibrid is a plat one Zerg. So I'll ask Vibrid to actually hop in in the next game if that's okay. I'm going to invite you back to party now. Okay. Um, so let's do... Belshia Vestige now. Another, eh, not the longest map. But a little bit longer than Paladino, slightly uh, easier for most Protoss players to ball off as well. So, um, we'll do one more ZVP just to get the feel of the changes in the build. 
Um, then we'll move on to ZVZ with Figwood. Awesome. Okay, go, go. Good luck, have fun, yo. Go, Protoss. I hate when it defaults people's races like that. Alright, I'll walk you through the build one more time because it is still new. Um, but I'll try to micromanage slightly less and not be quite as, uh, as vocal with everything. So you can get in the zone. I don't know if I have a zone. <laughs> Everything's always so um, scattered. I'm sure you have a zone. Thanks for the resub, Panda. All right, so um, let's kind of get the hang with those overlords as well. I keep forgetting to make myself a ref. Muted, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Brad? No, you cannot. All right, so let's rally one of these. Uh, yeah, that's good. Anytime around 45 seconds is good for that. Or rallying one of those eggs. Um, good, good, good. I'm just going to let him focus. There's no point micromanaging this too hard. i, I got to let him get it into his own groove. Send the drone down to that expansion right away. Yeah. It's the previous egg that you need to rally down there. Yeah, okay. I tried to no rally worries. the egg, but um, see, ordinarily I just send the drone after it drops its mineral. And that works fine as well. Collection off. So drone back to 18, and then you're going to go, of course, for the queen, the zergling. You're going to drone right up to 22, go overlord, roach warren, second queen. So it's Overlord, Roach Warren, and Second Queen next. And this times out really nicely so you can chase that probe away. So Roach Warren, Second Queen, looking good. You want to build one more drone, just so you've got this nice 16 drones on minerals, 3 on gas. You want to build one more overlord, so that you can build the 7 roaches immediately when that roach warren uh, is up. And then, of course, it's going to be 7. Uh, you can build a few more zerglings now as well. So if you want to build 2 or 4 more zerglings, you know, just 1 or 2 more pairs, just to make sure you can shut down any adept which feels like trying to scout you. And that's going to be mm -hmm. really nice. That's what that early zergling speed really helps with here. It makes it very hard for Protoss to know this is coming. How many roaches Seven. am I aiming for? Seven. So you normally want to build the first ones in your main and the later ones from your natural because the ones from the natural walk there sooner. There's all sorts of these cute little micromanagement things you do with these fancy aggressive builds because you don't really have much else to focus on. So um, lots of cool things that you can do. All right, so you just need to build another overlord, remember? So once you start seven roaches, it's overlord and then mass circling production and you're good. I feel kind of bad teaching these all-ins because if they're executed half decently, like they can just win you games right through to GM. Um, <laughs> these players tend to not be so good at defending in Legacy. But what the hell? Wants a few cheeses. He prefers macroing. Wants to finish off his days of practice with a couple cheese builds. Who am I to stop that? So here's a problem. Oh, he recalled? Oh my god. Q 
cute little thing I picked up on there. That, pre that feels pretty solid. Oh yeah, I was just finishing writing a note there um, before I unmuted. So, um, I like that, you know, the Zerglings running in, harassing, just trying to distract, throw your opponent off while, you know, you're just rallying units across. Good good usage. Um, when you engaged on the pylon, mm. there were four adepts there. So, there is this moment. It's interesting. Um, if you can get a full surround on a couple of adepts like that, where you're just going to kill them really quickly, it's fine to just jump on top of them, right? But otherwise, um, try to sometimes use your roaches to tank, if possible. So... You kind of move your roaches in first and just move them right up to the adepts. So the adepts are automatically attacking your roaches and okay. then your zerglings can come in um, unless you can get full surrounds on them um, and just kill them quickly. Because otherwise the adepts do a lot of damage against zerglings, really just takes your damage output down very quickly. Yep. Um, yeah. So it, it kind of changes things slightly. Um, it's, it's such a minute thing. It, it won't matter 90% of the time, but uh, it can be really cool, especially if you ever end up in the baiting out um, overcharge game. Um, also think about morphing low hit point roaches into ravages. You can do that with excess gas, that sort of stuff. So lots of really cool things you can do. Um, all right, let's move on to Zerg versus Zerg and let's try out an early pool here. Now, um, in terms of early pools, uh, there is a lot of micro um, potential. Um, there's a lot of different things we can do. So I'm trying to think about it. So we can go 12 pool into a standard game or we can go 12 pool into basically you just go with your 12 zerglings with your 12 pool, play it like a normal 12 pool except behind it you've actually just dropped a gas made a baneling nest and, and zergling speed and you're just going to hit with a one base all in follow up. Um, what appeals to you more out of those two options? Those are the main two that I can that come to mind. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I already have. I can show you my twelve pool build. Show me your twelve pool build. Let's um, just do that then. And you can refine that a little bit if you want. Sexy. I find that it in ZVZ. I actually have more luck what I'm not cheesing because everyone at this level is so cautious whereas I'm normally like hatch gas pool um, you know even taking a third hatch at 30 sort of thing while yeah. meanwhile they've gone pool first and put a spine crawler in their main um, so when I 12 pull I get there and they've got all these defense and I'm like what why would you have done this and then I lose so I get frustrated but anyhow let's roll no worries alright man Um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Show me how you do it. Um, definitely there are times where people play overly cautious. Um, I think if you learn your transitions well, there are, there are some opportunities to transition out. But yeah, if you're ever in a point where like over 50% of your games on ladder are just people playing oh pool God. first, very safe. What's up? That is... Uh, you know what? I don't can do soft pool. Cancel the no, 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 that's okay. Oh. I don't do... That's fine. That's fine. I okay. do. I go 13, 12. That's fine. Show me your show me your dirty bids. I'm going to shut up and let you focus. Get in the zone. Kick some ass. All right, all right, all right. Narkid says, Pig, we generally do this on a small two-player map. Um, you can make those all-ins work on big maps. Like, even on Newkirk Precinct, you'll play, see players like a laser, dark, um, throw out that therapy Roachling all-in against Protoss. Um, so... It's mainly about how wide the ramp in is, and as long as it's not like an obscene distance, like some of the old maps, like was it Ultazim Stronghold or some shit like that? Was the map where it was like took you six years to walk cross map? Um, but I don't think there's any maps like that in the current map pool, so you can probably make it work on most maps. You wouldn't do it on Proxima Station because you've got to go up such a narrow ramp because they've got the in base natural, right? Halo Legend, thank you so much for helping out, Pete. Um, that recall was hilarious. I was like, oh, he's recalling into the main. And then I realized the units are next to the natural. I'm like, oh my god. That misclick, man. Bad luck. So let me focus on the details here, guys. First thing I'm noticing is he's going for the Zerglings straight across the map. Direct pressure. 
um, which delays the queen a lot. So this is something which we need to take into account. Okay, ZBZ, um, Brad's 13, 12. Things go straight to pressure. On four player map, they might want to hide until Ling speed and do a different variation. One off gas I like. So he's come in, he's doing as much damage as he can, just kind of being as irritating as possible. Um, yeah, so Vibrid was distracted and had clicked his overlord right into the main. Because he's distracted, he's going to lose his overlord. Which will pretty much just end the game. Um, so this is over. This is ogre. It's all ogre, man. Just a move, Lings. Finish him. Oh my god, get them! Get them! Get them! Last drone goes down. GG's. GG. I get a bit panicked once the uh, the action starts, but um, that's generally the idea. Okay, cool. I'll give you a different build that's going to be really robust, even if they play overly safe. Um, since you seem to have that down, that's that's decent. That build is is not bad by any means. Um, on a big four player map, you might might want to vary it. Like, do you drone scout if you do that on a four player map, or do you just only do that on small two player maps? I uh, know sometimes I just do it if I'm really tilted. I just commit, and if I don't pick them first, then I have a 50-50 chance of getting them second. And if I get them last, well, then I'll have a lot of Zerglings by then. <laughs> as long as you hide your Zerglings from their overlords, you don't you don't headbutt into yeah, overlords, then that, that actually right. can work out. Um, okay, no worries. Well, I think we should really focus then on, you know, the, the, the opening that allows you to be aggressive and do so many different things and is fantastic because it also allows you to macro off it. It's the same thing we keep talking about. 17 gas, 17 pull, 18 hatch. It's the best cheesy build in all the world. And you can also play economic and you deny your opponent scouting so they don't know what's coming. And that's what we're going to do now. And that's the, that's the song about how we're going to do the exact same opening with every single one of your aggressive builds, which is going to make your life very easy because you're like, oh, I'm frustrated, I'm tilted, I'm having a bad time. What the... Oh, I need to just cheese some people. And you know what? You're just going to be able to do the same opening every single game, no matter what their race is, which is awesome. So, 17 gas, 17 pool, 18 hatch. Oh my lord, who would have expected such madness? Um, go straight for Ling Speed at 100 gas. Go straight for a second queen ASAP. Um, once you can, you know, whatever. Basically, it's the same as the previous build, just with a Baneling Nest instead of a, a Roach Warren, um, pretty much. Um, stop at 19 drones... Masslings, morph your first uh, forward two lings, so you keep your first two lings alive. And um, morph your first forward two lings into banes, obviously in a hidden area, somewhere where you know they can't see and they probably won't check. Um, so that as your big flood of zerglings comes, you can attack. Now, you can just keep rallying lings. Uh, Ling Bane and go all in. So this is the transition. Um, so for now, we'll just do that one. But you could also... You can macro up, make some defensive Banes, and play a normal game. Or you can add one big round of drones. Maybe a second gas if you need it. Uh, but usually one big round of drones, a Roach Warren... 
some overlords, and then do a big roach bane timing. So there's a few different transitions based on how you're feeling. For now, we're going to keep things simple. Just go non-stop playing bane with it. Um, All right, Vibridge should be good. All right, let's do this. Good luck, have fun. Uh, I'm gonna dive straight into this map. So same opening as with the Roach Warren build, just make sure you build a Baneling Nest instead. Um, you stop at 19 drones, so you know 16 drones on minerals, three on gas, and you just mass those Zerglings. And uh, when you get a big, big group of them together, you morph those two Banelings across the enemy side of the map, and you, uh, you go hit them with endless waves of Ling Banes. So, so don't engage until I have those first two bandlings, though. That's the idea. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you don't you don't go across the map usually until like the, the, there's a natural timing that happens. You'll have like a bunch of lava injects pop out, zerglings be flooding across, and that's when your banelings should also go. But yeah, you, you can scout with your zerglings, just don't lose them. Your zergling speed will finish earlier, so even if you have to run those zerglings back away from their zerglings, there'll be a point where ling speed finishes off, and then you can hide those zerglings wherever you want, and they won't be able to keep up with you. So, um, yeah, good luck, have fun. Get in your groove and show me what you got, boy. My words of encouragement are getting weirder and weirder. Show me what you got, boy. Yeah! Get in there real deep and baneling bust this zerg. I muted my mic so he can't hear me. And it's only you guys that watch the chat that have to deal with such ridiculousness. Watch the stream. Thanks, like, Halo Legend and Vibrid for uh, hanging out, by the way, guys. Um, will you upload this coaching session on YouTube, says Dogker. I feel really dirty about uploading this one, but um, I guess I will. I just kind of feel sorry for the, the Terrans and Protoss and Zergs that have to play against it. I reckon it'll get a lot of views as well. People love their cheesy builds. I like cheese coaching. Written down on my piece of paper, my little to-do list I keep on my desk. So let's keep an eye on how he's doing everything, guys. Um, just remember to get that uh, Overlord next up. Remember, one pair of Zerglings, sorry, actually. Forgot to do that this time, that's okay. You built one extra drone than normal. Okay. So second queen and the baneling nest and then you obviously rebuild the drone that goes into the baneling nest and uh, from there it's just you know overlord zerglings banelings so probably just one extra overlord is all you'll need and uh, yeah always good to get the overlords ahead of time to make sure you don't forget and then from there it's uh, nice and easy now with your early zerglings Personally, I like to put those on a secondary hotkey already because I plan for those to be banelings and I'm, I want to make sure I hide them. You can see he's gone hatch first at the front from his creep spread. You can see he's got zerglings out. So you just want to kind of keep your zerglings somewhere where he's not going to check them. So over up behind his third base or his fourth base on the right hand side of the map would be perfect positions to hide those zerglings. The watchtower is never a good position to hide banelings because that's the first place your opponent's gonna go onto the map when they feel like moving out. He's not paying attention to the vision. He, sh he could see that overlord really sloppy doing that. If his opponent was watching, he could have stopped that. Anyways. Good stuff, just non-stop Ling Bane and go for the throat. Good luck, have fun, man. Just focus on the spine. If he focuses on the spine, he does... Oh my god, there's even a hole in the wall. Oh, he did not focus on the spine. He just clicked his banelings in there. Oh, not very good micro. Not very good micro. He could have busted through there and done a lot more damage. Instead, he's bleeding out zerglings to two zerglings and a queen. Um, definitely could have done that a little bit better, but it should still work out.
Those roaches on the ramp are doing a really good job. Shift click those drones. Looks like he did. Good job. Alright, GG's. Well played. Um, if you ever see a building just start like that, yep. just, just click on it. The spine crawler, if you clicked on that, it would have died almost instantly. Your zerglings would have then been able to wrap around the queen and his two zerglings, and you would have just been inside his base. Um, so because you focused on his queen, which had less surface area, more hit points, it took you a lot longer to break through there, and there was a few awkward moments where you were slightly inefficient. More practice, the more decisive you'll be with this sort of push, um, and so on. Let's give Vibrid a little bit of advice as well.